race, Sheila and I went to Reno, Nevada to attend the annual Porsche Parade. Now this is an annual gathering of the faithful in all kinds of exotic places, always in the United <laughs> States. You end up with three or four hundred Porsches of all vintages and kinds, each one more beautiful than the next. I mean, with tender, loving care, the paint and all the details, you know, for a week of racing and lying and, you know, just celebrating whatever. One of the things that happens on this occasion is what's called a Woody store, in which they sell all kinds of paraphernalia with Porsche crests or Porsche script on it. Um, during the years that Sheila and I lived in Stuttgart, the overburgermeister, the mayor of Stuttgart, was a man by the name of Manfred Rommel, the son of the World War II general, Erwin Rommel, you know, the Desert Fox. Manfred Rommel was as straight, arrow a human being as I have ever known. He was re-elected for all the years that Sheila and I were in Stuttgart, without any real competition. And we got to be pretty good friends. A couple of times every month, we would have lunch together, and uh, maybe even played some tennis while I could still do such nonsense. Um, at this Woody store in Reno, I found an American art form called a T-shirt. On the front of this T-shirt, it said, if you live a good life, and take good care of your portion. When you die, you will go to Stuttgart. Well, I bought that shirt from Oberbürger, Master Rommel, and made a big deal about presenting it to him in some event. But the t-shirt I really want to share with you is the one I bought from my wonderful chief engineer, Helmut Bott. May he rest in peace. Helmut Bott not only had an incredible back wheel. He was probably one of the most innovative technical people in the automotive industry during the last quarter of the 20th century. But beyond that, he had an incredible front wheel. He was one of the linchpins in getting people to do what we did. The t-shirt I got for Helmut Bott, on the front it said, Le Mans 1982, Porsche wins again. No big deal. On the back of that t-shirt, it said, surprise. You can change the rules, but you can't change the results. My friend, that's what it was all about. You see, I don't ever want you to be afraid of change. There's going to be change. But those organizations that can most quickly get the relevant people that are going to have to do the implementation together to formulate the plan so that they really understand in their guts what is it that we're really trying to do around here, then you're going to win. And the faster the change comes, and the better you learn to do that, the bigger you're going to win. During my years at Porsche and at Cummins and any of these places, the one thing that gave me more pause than anything else was that change would stack because I knew if that ever happened, who would end up owning the world? Where did I start? The commodity people! I mean, if nothing changes, there's no opportunity. And you're all going to go down in flame. The more change there is, and the more skillful you become, getting stuff implemented, the bigger you are. And the big companies are going to wonder what the hell happened. 
Now, the problem is, no matter what you come up with, it will become a commodity. If you give them time, they'll figure it out, and they'll duplicate it. And what do you got to be doing in the meantime? You've got to keep working. And you see, that, in my experience, is your job as CEO. You don't have time to screw around with keeping track of costs. You've got to have somebody that knows how to do that. And let me tell you something else I learned. You tell them, I want you to show me on one page what is going on. Are we earning money? Or I don't want a damn report like that. I you may need that for someone, not for me. I am going to read it. Because chances are I wouldn't understand it anyway. I just want you to tell me what really matters. And if they don't know how to do that, then you've got to look for somebody else. You see, I have always in my career had somebody doing that part of the job that I trusted them. And they told me, I got to tell you, at Porsche, when I had some crazy idea, I never hesitated to present it in our staff. Because I knew my chief financial officer, Heinz Bernitsky, would sharpen his pencil before I quit explaining in order to prove to everybody how this was nuts and would never work. And on the next meeting, we hear it. And then we could all decide, is it worth the risk? Do we really want to do it? And that's the way I learned to operate. To this day, I don't know how to read an annual report. Now I want to learn. I'll have somebody do that for me and tell me what the hell is going on. You know, I uh, would like to close. i got to stop at the bottom of the floor. So i got three minutes. I want to tell you a little story about a father who was sitting in the living room. And his little five-year-old girl came running in from the room next door, and she said, Daddy, Daddy, Goldie is dead. Now, when a little five-year-old girl loses her goldfish, that's a pretty serious matter. And the father, being full of compassion and understanding, said, Honey, come here, set her down on his knee, and he started to explain that the good Lord gives life and takes life, and that includes goldfish. He said, well, I just happened to have a gold-plated goldfish casket in my pocket. He took out a cigarette case, opened it up, and I will throw out all these nasty cigarettes, and then we'll lay Goldie in her golden goldfish casket. And we'll walk out in the backyard, find a nice shady spot under a big tree, we'll dig a deep hole, very good. And after the funeral, you can invite some of your neighbor friends, and you can have them over, and we'll have some chocolate cake and some ice cream. And uh, that seemed to make the little girl feel a little bit better. And she goes back in the next room, and he hears her exclaim, Daddy, Daddy, come quick! Goldie's alive! And he runs in there, and as he is standing there, admiring this miracle, the goldfish is swimming around in the goldfish bowl. He feels a tug at his trousers and looks down in the two big brown eyes and she says, let's kill him. <laughs> I don't want you to kill him. I want you to love him and take care of him. And I wish you a lot of luck in what I know I'm not easy. Thank you very much. Thank you.